And now it's time for the Captain America Adventure Program. Brought to you by Roxxon Motor Oil. Tonight's thrilling tale takes us deep into the heart of the Arden Forest, where Hitler's Nazi guard have ambushed the 107th Infantry and taken Betty Carver, the battalion's beautiful triage nurse, as their hostage. You lousy krauts are in big trouble once Captain America gets here. When I'm through with you, Hitler, you're gonna be seeing stars and stripes. Nein! You will bow down to the Fuhrer. Here. Never. Angie, would you mind changing that? Oh, you bet. I mean, yeah, French beat me out for that part. <clears throat> you lousy krauts are in big trouble once Captain America gets here. It's better, right? Thrillingly realistic. You moving? I uh, lost my roommate. <laughs> my first place, I lived with this girl from Queens. It was okay for maybe six months, and then bam, one day she's engaged. Next day, she's married and living in Armok. You think you know people. Cozy studio apartment. That means it's a broom closet. Convenient to public transportation. You'll be living under the Third Avenue well. What would you suggest? Girl down the hall from me just moved out. Couldn't hack it, I guess. She was always crying to her mother on the hall phone. Mm, whole thing. Yeah, maybe the first couple times. Anyway, it's over on 63rd. It's real safe. Lots of great girls. Plus, I'd be your neighbor, so that's not nothing. That was a lovely idea, but I'd hate for you to grow tired of me. You don't strike me as the crying on the hall phone type English. I appreciate it, truly, but um, <clears throat> I'm actually on my way to see an apartment now. At this hour? You sure you're reading the right kind of want ads? Comes recommended through a friend. You say so. You presumably already noticed the North German Renaissance influences, but the layout is decidedly French. Fresh fruit and scones served every morning. Ooh. The chef likes a challenge, so you may order anything you like. I can't stay. Mr. Stark insisted. He also wants me to clear his name on multiple charges of treason. If anyone finds out I'm living in his house, I'll be fitted for the noose. Well, if it puts you at your ease, this isn't one of his primary residences. Mr. Stark uses this more for private entertaining. It's too risky. Well, if you're certain you wouldn't like to see the master bedroom. Oh. Russian sable, custom made. Um, perhaps one night. Splendid. Regarding our other matter, I checked through Mr. Stark's files, but found no mention of Leviathan. I couldn't find anything at the SSR either. What about the two gentlemen with the unusual... New York hospitals had no record of laryngotomy patients fitting those descriptions within the last three years. I think those quiet men are from out of town. Mm. So, I've got two foreign agents with no voice boxes fighting over a milk truck full of experimental implosives. Just another day at the office. No, oh, I wish. The Daisy Clover Dairy opens at five. We need to find that milk truck. I'll be standing by with the car at ten two. You've nearly been killed once, Mr. Jarvis. Others have been less fortunate. I think it's best I should carry on with them. Oh. On occasion, Mr. Stark enjoys adding a theatrical element to his romantic endeavors. Is that what he calls it? Oh, yes, this could prove useful. Oh, don't be lewd. Florist usually by noon. Cancel them both. And I shall cancel them both. Good night, Mr. Jarvis. I do wish you'd change your mind and allow me to accompany you. I could be your second pair of eyes. I can't imagine there being much danger at the dairy hub. I'm only going to hunt a truck. Whoever drove that truck is a man that needs questioning. Good night. And how do you plan to find it? I held on to the Vita Ray detector from Project Rebirth. It should still pick up a reading from whatever truck was used to transport the nitrogen. What? 
Well, it seems a tad conspicuous to walk into Daisy Clover and halt business to beg for vital radiation. I can assure you, I have far more tag than you give me credit. Oh, uh, you've popped a button. No. Good night, Mr. Jarvis. Well, what's the worst that can happen? Tell you anything you want to know. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I swear to God, I don't know no Lee Brannis. Is it a person or a place? No, no, no. I told Spider I didn't want anything to do with that stuff. It's too hot, too pricey. I told him, Gino DeLucia out in Bensonhurst. He'd buy it. You heard of that? Yes. Well, you have not been acting like it. I've had 15 complaints that you are under direct violation of City Health Provision 42, Article 23, i.e. the care and transport of all milk stuff. Complaints from who? Right now, me. I have a court order to inspect all delivery trucks in this distribution hub. Let's hope I don't find cheese where the milk's supposed to be. Now, are you going to help me or hinder me? Help? Good answer. truck missing. Well, we got a guy out sick the past two days. He uses his truck to commute. Has he never heard of a bus? Name and address. Sheldon McPhee, but I don't got an address. Leave that to me. And put some air in that tire. Well, here's what's left of rocks on. Makes even less sense in the light of day. The entire chemical refinery squashed into that. I've never seen anything like it. This is scary stuff, gentlemen. The kind of technology that could give the A-bomb a run for his money. We need to find it fast. I think it's magnets. What? We got steel fused with wood, fused with iron, fused with concrete. Last time I checked, stone and wood don't carry a magnetic charge. Well, excuse me, Sir Isaac Newton. <laughs> That's gravity, you dumb ape. Well, what do you think did it? I think Howard Stark did it. Come on, we're going to Rock Sun. Nobody burns down your house by accident. Not you, Krasminski. I got a special detail for a man with your skills. Grab a crowbar, pull that thing apart. Find me some evidence. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I see. Perfect. Yes, yes, thank you.
Southeast Prospect, third race. You sure? Not at all, that's why they call it gambling. I need to pop out for a minute, personal matters. Cover for me? Sure thing, but you owe me one. I've got that film developed for you. Hey, thanks a bunch. Photographer from the Society Pages was at Spider Raymond's club. He says he may have got a shot of the blonde who was with Spider before he got killed. Well, that would be a big break. Can I help you look? I thought you were leaving. Susa, need you in the basement. I'm busy. Well, now you're extra busy. I got a 10-ton ball of rocks and garbage with your name on it. All right, all right. Give me a minute. Carter, finish up those transport reports and file them for me. Carter, transport reports. Get wiggling. <sighs> Looks like I'm going to miss that race. Well, it's probably for the best. Jarvis residence. I don't have long, so listen very carefully. I need you to dispose of Howard's car. I beg your pardon? The SSR are looking into Roxon at this very moment. That car sustained damage at the site and is likely to be teeming with vital radiation. Make it disappear. Very well. <clears throat> Let's see, the linens come out of the wash in 30 minutes. Now. Fine. I shall forego the linens. Did you locate the dairy truck? Not yet, but I did locate the driver. Sheldon McPhee uses the truck to commute from Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Shall we leave straight away? Uh, no. There's something I need to take care of here first. You know, we used to be friends, Howard and I. Lunch at the club, Christmas parties, charity functions. To your very good health, gentlemen. It's 10.45 in the morning. Stark. My wife. Bit of a jump to go from that to industrial sabotage. Not the way he does it, from what I hear. So it's personal, this attack? It's all the same with Howard. As long as he's amused and making money. He attempted to purchase that refinery as recently as January, but I refused. Now it's a smoking crater, not to mention a federal crime scene. You tell me who benefits. Any idea what Stark may have used to cause this kind of damage? <sighs> What is your interest regarding minor legal transgressions not related to the Red Hook refinery? Low. We're not hunting you, Mr. Jones. I have sources working in Stark Industries, and they told me that Howard is working on a formula for molecular nitramine. Now, theoretically, it could result in a concussive blast followed by a vacuum implosion. Supposedly, it has its roots in his work with Vita radiation. Time out. Fire radiation.
No, I don't see you. Okay, okay. Well, I'll keep an eye on. Uh, she, she's right. She's right here. Chief was a word. <clears throat> Chief Dooley, just stepped away. Uh, vital radiation. Yes, I think we have something for that in the Project Rebirth file. I'll see if I can find it. What was that about? Oh, just another errand. Carter, about time. Well, I didn't know our government had such good taste in secretaries. What's your name, darling? Agent. Oh, <laughs> that has a lovely ring to it. As requested. I'll meet you back at the office. What's the rush? You know, stick around. We could use your help. Wouldn't be for filing, would it? Turns out anyone near the nitrogen blast was exposed to Vita radiation, which is probably still somewhere about some other person. So we're scanning everyone on the rocks and staff. There's a chance this is an inside job. Yeah, there's a chance I take Rita Hayworth home tonight, but it's unlikely if you catch my drift. If you've got some of Stark's guys in your pocket, there's a chance he's got some of your guys in his. And how am I to help? How comfortable are you with this? You'll be dealing with the ladies. I volunteered. The chief said it wouldn't be appropriate. Mr. Jones, I notice these men are wearing company-issued uniforms. Do they change their clothes on site? Well, we have a locker room for all the technicians who handle hazardous materials. What's your point, Carter? Well, low-level vita radiation would barely saturate the top layer of a person's skin. A hot shower would wash it out straight away. But clothing would remain tainted for longer. Trousers, shoes, even a wristwatch. I suggest we check the clothes the men wore to work this morning. Not a bad idea. We can... Hey! Hey! Stop! Where does that lead? Down to the front lobby. Physical evidence linking you to an act of industrial sabotage and probably treason. With the type of charges being tossed around here, I can't see you winding up anywhere besides the electric chair. Of course, you still do have the opportunity to switch seats with someone else. You see, fighting crime is a lot like fishing with your buddies. Biggest fish wins. No offense, but you're not the biggest fish. 
Doesn't mean you're not plenty big enough for me to feed my bosses. But if you were to help me catch a bigger fish, say a grouper or a shark, I could see myself letting you off the line. I don't believe you. Well, you should. I'm in law enforcement. Thing is, Mr. Van Ert, we're under a bit of an accelerated time frame here. A lot of pressure to get this case sewn up. So this deal that I'm offering you will expire as soon as I leave the room. All you have to do is point us in the direction of your employer. Just give me a name. Just give me a name. Don't say I didn't try to do this the easy way. You can threaten me all you want, but I'm not talking. I'm not here to make you talk, Miles. I'm here to make you sing. You're gonna want to bite down. You need to see what would have happened if you'd left a carrot. Carter, take off for the night. Lady shouldn't be seeing us. You boys play nice. I found one. I'm late for my appointment. It has its own bathroom. I have no idea what you're saying. Don't make me come out there. Angie, I really... Women only. A safe community for modern female professionals. Apartment for rent. 550 square feet, furnished, full bath, high floors, quiet building, security assured. Close proximity to the Lexington Avenue local. Continental breakfast upon request. Paradise or what? That sounds perfect. That's because it is. The only thing that could possibly make it better is if you live next to me. Oops, you would. 3C if you need a cup of sugar. I really shouldn't, Angie. Am I missing something here? You need a place. This one is great, so I'm thinking maybe it's me. I'm afraid I wouldn't make a very good neighbor. Uh, that's my ride. I'll see you later. Too late. Please, Carter. Mr. Jarvis. Meanwhile, in the snowy mountains of the Eastern Alps, Battalion Triage Nurse Betty Carver tidies up while the men defend their country. What a beautiful day to mend these pants. And my new Singer Featherweight 221 sewing machine makes stitching so easy. Oh, no. Nazis! Again! They've got me all tied up. If only Captain America were here to rescue me. Who writes this rubbish? Well, I rather enjoy it, actually. Although the, the real thing is considerably more impressive. Are you trying to butter me up, Mr. Jarvis? Look, merely pleased to receive your call. Well, you are faster than a train. How flattering. It's very nice. You did dispose of the old car. I left it in her broken with the keys in the ignition. I don't imagine it's still there. It did seem a terrible waste, though. It was used in the commission of a crime. One doesn't park that sort of thing in a garage. Cedar Grove. Aptly named. You might hurry. We don't have much time. I'm afraid Agent Thompson can be rather persuasive. We're gonna need a new stick. Immigration has no record of elite Brannis ever entering the country. Could be an alias. If it is, our friend in there doesn't know it. He wasn't holding anything back. We get anything on the milk truck driver? I'm on hold with Daisy Clover payroll. I mean, it sounded like he was the brains of the operation anyway. More like the Krasminski of the operation. Joke's on you, peg leg. I don't even know how to drive a truck. Driver may be a lead. This guy Brannis is the key. Sorry, Chief. I pressed Vanner pretty hard in there and Howard Stark. I don't think he ever met him. Doesn't mean anything. Stark could have go-betweens between his go-betweens. And this guy Brannis is calling the shots on this deal. I'm telling you, he's our direct link to Stark. I got the milk truck driver. Sheldon McPhee, 4 Spring Hill Road, Cedar Grove, New Jersey. Hot damn. Let's go, boys.
here we are again. Fewer guards and rocks, at least. Shall I leave the engine running in case you trigger another implosion? Mr. Jarvis, go home to your wife. If you leave now, you may even catch the end of Benny Goodman. Miss Carter, when you called me, I assumed it was because you needed more than a cab. I thought it proved rather useful last time. I agree, but on this occasion, I've got my own ride home. We now return to the Captain America Adventure Program. This is our hero's defenseless sweetheart finds herself in the clutches of evil. American women are so weak. You are coming with us. If only Captain America were here to rescue me. This Carver isn't going anywhere with you, Nazi scum. Seize him! Unhand her! Hit him again, Cap! <laughs> Had enough yet? Are you all right, Miss Carver? Is that all you've got? Hello? Mr. McPhee? Captain America, what would I ever do without you? Why does this keep happening? It's so hard getting straight answers out of people nowadays. What ever happened to a nice cup of tea and a civilized interrogation? Trouble. Nothing that can't be fixed. What the hell are you doing here? Mr. Stark asked me to help you, and so I have. I sabotaged the motor. Move and I shoot. I thought you'd be more impressed. Well, I'm not. I told you I don't need your help. An ideal butler provides service without being asked. Oh, put it back. I need to drive this thing out of here. <sighs> Won't be a moment. Where are Stark's inventions? I want protection. The SSR will take you in, provided that you say something interesting right bloody now. Psst. Ask him about Leviathan. Who is Leviathan? Not do what? Your employers. Not anymore. So Leviathan sent you to rob Howard Stark's vault. And you double-crossed them. Well, that seems incredibly brave and incredibly stupid. <laughs> Leviathan only wanted one thing from Howard Stark. All finished. Well, fetch Mr. McPhee. I need to take him in, too. What was the one thing? What was Leviathan after? I want protection. Then start talking. A uh, bit of a snag, actually. I'm afraid Mr. McPhee's left the premises. I did find this. Mm, well, don't shoot yourself in the face. Get in the truck. Perfectly, thank you. These racks of explosives are distracting me from the smell of stale milk. Oh, good. You did say you wanted to help. Take the Lincoln Tunnel back to Manhattan and stop fidgeting. Nothing's going to happen. Did either of you hear that? Well, I definitely heard that. Do I even need to ask? Yeah, 
ask what? Yeah, I guess you're right. I used to strap a chair to my ass and take long walks around the neighborhood, too. We know you are, Mr. McPhee. We were on our way to pay you a visit. So, who did this to you? Was it Lee Brennis? We know he paid you off to use a truck. In deep water. I'd take the life preserve if I was you. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. We'll keep an open mind. Yes, I, I'm afraid Mr. Brannis broke my fall. The rest of the weapons that you stole from Howard, I need to find out where you hid them. You're the only one who knows. I need to find those weapons before I... Leviathan is coming. Help me stop them. What is that? Mr. Brannis, what is that, a heart? Mr. Brannis. Where's the car? It's that way. I think we should retrieve it immediately. Miss Carter, please. I used to come skinny dip in here as a kid. That's a sight. Somebody knows what we know before we know it, and it's really starting to chap my ass. If we can pick up some baby powder for you on the way back, maybe that'll help. We got footprints. A woman's. She was with him till he died. Or up until she popped him herself. You gotta be the broad who cuffed Fatty to his chair. Could be that blonde at the nightclub. We gonna look at her? Pictures were Susan's detail. What the hell's he doing? Susan! What the hell are you doing? Yes, Mr. Stark's zippers are under considerable strain. You're very fortunate, you know. You missed the bone by three inches. That's not what I meant. Then look me in the eye and say what you meant. You're very fortunate that I ignored your instructions. Oh, you're so right. How I managed to stay alive before I met you, I have no idea. I can't tell if you're being arrogant or ignorant. Both, I imagine. Your line of work requires support. People who care about your well-being can be there to stitch up your wounds. If I allow people to get close to me, I'm putting them in danger. So your solution is to remove yourself from the world you wish to protect. Where's the sense in that? There is not a man or woman, no matter how fit he or she may be, who is capable of carrying the entire world on their shoulders. Steve was. 
from what Mr. Stark has told me, Captain Rogers relied heavily on you for courage, strategy, and moral guidance. You were his support. Your desire to help others is noble. But I doubt you'll find much success unless you allow others to help you. As you were. Secretary Goodman, Kurtzberg, and Holloway. Evelyn. Hey, Angie. Evelyn is a lounge singer at a club in Midtown. Hi, Sarah. Hi. That's Sarah. She's a slut. I am so happy you changed your mind. You're going to love living here. Assuming I'm accepted, I've never rented a flat that required an interview. It's just a formality, you'll ace it. Miriam's a total pussycat. Your references are impeccable. Senator Palmer is especially complimentary. He and my father were dear friends. Were you limping as you came in? Caught my heel on a cobblestone. You know how the West Village is. I never travel below 23rd Street, so no, I do not. How long do you see yourself working for the telephone company? Only until I'm married, Miss Fry. In a city filled with temptation, debauchery, and mischief, the Griffith Hotel is a haven for proper young ladies. Our code of conduct is indisputable. Attire should be demure and elegant. Curfew is 10 o'clock, no drinking, no men above the first floor. No exceptions. Is that clear, Miss Carter? Perfectly. That is right, it. Right, right. Show him, Susan. Right there. No, we're right. Show that other photo. Not even close. No. That right there, that's the angle. Don't back off, okay? I'm telling you. Carter, come here for a second. Come here, come here, come here. <clears throat> Set a little bet for us. That door to Maggio. I don't follow boxing. <laughs> oh. I told you she wouldn't know who DiMaggio was. I still say it's him. Believe me, I think I'd know if I was in the same room as Joe DiMaggio. How do you figure? I would sense his presence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bet against me? How could you be sure? It wasn't. That's why they call it game one. Do you, um, spot anyone else? Nothing definitive, but we got a couple shots of the blonde. She really knows how to duck a camera. Not one clear shot of her face. Tough break. Nobody's lucky forever. I'll find her. Once again, the powers of freedom and democracy prevail. I'm so lucky to have a man as brave and strong as Captain America. Not so fast, Captain America. I still have a few tricks up my sleeve. You'll never be able to defeat my secret weapon. What on earth could that be? And that concludes tonight's episode of... The Captain America Adventure Program. Be sure to tune in next week for another thrilling tale. In which find something, Chris Yeah, I think I found something big. <laughs>